All right, I trust you did well on that checkup. We're moving ahead now to page 15 through 18. This is a review of the adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing of positive and negative numbers. We call positive and negative number, numbers integers. And um, yeah, this is kind of different. I mean, hopefully you've been exposed to it back in seventh and eighth grade, pre-algebra. Um, but maybe after a summer of not doing math, we really need to freshen up on this. So I'm going to cover this rather quickly. If you need a longer explanation, look back in some of the older videos that I did. And I think I go into a little more depth of explaining it. But let's talk about the rules for adding when the signs are the same. But I mean, if I just said what's positive 3 plus positive 4, you know that the answer is positive 7. Okay? Because 3 plus 4 is 7. We're not worried about positive and negative numbers all the way back to you know first, second grade. We we didn't realize we were dealing with positive numbers, they just were positive, okay? But now if I'm adding and both numbers are negative, then here's the rule. We just add and keep the common sign. So what I have my students do is we kind of chant, adding when the signs are the same, add and keep the common sign. So you want this to ring in your head so when you're doing homework problems and you come across positive and negative addition, you think, okay, what, are they both the same? If the signs are the same, add and keep the common sign. Now. It gets trickier when the signs are different. And we can try to picture this on a number line. If I started way back here at negative 12 and then I come forward 5, then I'm actually at negative 7. Okay? Picture, uh, you know, being, let's say, at the zero mark on the football field and you go back 12 yards in the negative zone and then you gain five yards while well, you're still seven yards behind where you want to be. So there's still negative seven. So the way the rule is adding when the signs are different, subtract the smaller from the larger, keep the sign of the larger. I'm not going to get gory detail about absolute value and making that part of the rule. Technically, yes, we're talking about the absolute values. So the absolute value of 12 is bigger than the absolute value of 5. So we're going to keep the negative sign is the point. But we're going to subtract the 5 from the 7, 5, excuse me, 5 from the 12, and get 7. And then we're going to keep that sign, the negative, okay? So here I'm adding, and the signs are different. One's positive, here the second one's negative. Subtract the smaller, 8 from the larger, 13, so we get 5. Keep the sign of the larger, so that would be negative. So it's real simple. Students get confused though if they are not confident with the rule. So let's review these two again. Say them out loud with me, here we go. Adding when the signs are the same, add and keep the common sign. Adding when the signs are different, subtract the smaller from the larger, keep the sign of the larger. Chant that to yourself. Write it down, review it, memorize it so that when you're doing problems, the rule will just come to mind and will guide you and help you just like that. All right, it'll be helpful. There we go. Next rule is subtraction. This one, the way I have my students memorize it is I say we're going to change subtraction to addition and change the second number to its opposite. Now you know from kindergarten that 6 minus 3 is 3, okay? But we're going to do it the algebraic way. We're going to change subtraction to addition and change the second number to its opposite. Now the reason I emphasize that word and is students are always looking for shortcuts. So they always want to just stop with change subtraction to addition. No, that's not, that's not going to give you the right answer because 6 minus 3 is not 9. So we have to also change the second number to its opposite. Okay? Then we can apply this rule which says subtract the smaller from the larger. So 6 minus 3 is 3. Keep the sign of the larger, which is positive. Say, so Mr. Anger, that was hard. Well, I wanted you to see that you get the same answer. Okay? Yeah, I made it hard just to go through the process. But now that you see that it works, we can apply it to really complicated ones and be confident that we're getting the right answer. So this one's a little more complicated. Negative 6 minus negative 2. Let's apply the rule. We're going to change subtraction to addition and change the second number to its opposite. 
So now we're saying negative 6 plus positive 2. The signs are different. Subtract the smaller from the larger. So we get 4. Keep the sign of the larger. So we would get negative 4. Okay? See, that's not so hard. And then the rule for multiplying and dividing is really simple. If the signs are the same, the answer is positive. If they're different, the answer is negative. <clears throat> so negative 3 times positive 8, the answer is negative 24. If I had negative 3 times negative 8, they're both negative, so they're both the same, the answer is positive. Okay? So if they're the same, if both are the same, the answer is positive. So it's a very different rule from this one. Okay, this one, for adding, I keep the common sign. Multiplying and dividing, no. So here's where students get confused. If they haven't mastered what, what the rule says and how to apply it, they start, they all just kind of run together and they get mixed up and then they guess. So be really careful as you go through this section. Um, I'm looking to see if there's any... So on page 19, obviously, if it's written as a fraction, that's another way of writing a division problem. So you take the top number, divide by the denominator, and then again, you look at the rule. If the signs are if they're both negative, then the answer is positive. If either one is positive, it doesn't matter if it's the larger or the smaller, it doesn't matter. If one's negative, one's positive, the answer will be negative. So that's a really important <clears throat> thing to look at. And then all of a sudden, you're up to the next checkup on page 20. So do those pages carefully, check your work, make sure you understand what you're doing before you try to do the checkup on page 20.